Shall we wait for uh, 10 minutes more or five minutes more? Till then, of course, we can. Five, so five, five, only five. Only five? No harm waiting for 10 minutes. Kiti it logo. There are 20 here. Yeah. Five minutes. Your team members are here, no, Dr. Garghi? Hello? Hello, ma'am. Ah. Are your team members here already? 
unfortunately not i contacted mr chauhan uh-huh. he is in northeast so he won't be able to make it and your local team <laughs> they are pretty tired so it was a hectic day for all of us <laughs> working with for one level. exhibition in mantale to educate our local represent our representatives in the assembly and uh, then there was a review meeting by chief minister himself oh so, so it was actually a wrong day was, it was quite a hectic day i called everybody at office around 8 o'clock in the morning so now office is empty oh i i hope i'm you could audible have told me we could have uh, well postponed it by a day or two no 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 i mean uh, this is special for me yeah. i mean any to write in black and white gets printed uh, and uh, this is occasion okay you can't really celebrate your own birthday on some other day you know so <laughs> <laughs> uh, if it All if right. it was coming out on world heritage day hmm. i am mean, pretty happy about it and i don't see any reason of po- any postponement sure. no we are very happy to have it on this day but just looking at <laughs> your pressures and your team's pressures <laughs> no perfectly all right no problem okay so uh, shall we shall we start purush shall we start yes ma'am i think we should start i will just move to a more silent location you have just you have moved to a better place i just moved to a better place well oh no no there is noise there is noise i just started off then just try to see what you can do about about the noise prish <laughs> well we are very happy to have you here today for this it's a major archaeological monograph on girija valley and i'm sure most of you may not have heard this name girija valley but our dr tejas garge who is a very dear friend to institution and us personally too and a scholar as uh, he brought this uh, to our notice that he they had carried out this work it's a it's a great body of work as you will see from the book now He did it under the guidance of Madan, uh, Mr. Madan Singh Chauhan when he was working with ASI, and he he told us that this needs publication, and it was not somehow possible with the government uh, mm, machinery or whatever you call it. And we are there, so we decided to do it. And after much delay, and uh, you know how the COVID situation was, and we started to do this it was it was a massive work and it was only possible because purush kept at it purush said that we should do this we should be do this madam and then ramesh actually put in his precious time to edit this well we all flocked to aurangabad we see kids of ajanta we see elora sometimes we see pital khora also and then the devgiri is there some people go to aurangabad caves the ghatotkoch caves etc but um, because these complexes are there something was really cooking in the this valley and we have not heard of girija valley since this is a very important cave complex in aurangabad we can guess and gauge the historical heritage the nasti after important dynasty has uh, ruled over this region and we don't really know much it's it's our fault that we don't know and there is some work now here presented to us by dr tejas darge and his team at ksi we we wanted to publish this uh, as a hard copy but right now we are in difficult times so the best is e copy today only for this uh, launching program we have got a few copies printed 
and it is really massive. I, I didn't even have the time to go to Dr. Garge and give him the hard copy, but which I am surely going to do tomorrow. So Dr. Garge, tomorrow you will get your hard copy, you know, feel it like. Okay, but today we will be, it's quite well done with all its uh, color plates in place, quite good printing. I hope you can see it properly. I mean, just a glimpse. So this is here. This Girija Wali, which is called uh, uh, Maismar. I don't know why somebody started calling it Maheshmar, but it is Maismar. Probably lots of fellows uh, on the mall here and in the Aurangabad district. But the, uh, it's known as Maismar. But here it is it has been referred to as Girija Valley. I suppose it's better that instead of me, Dr. Kurush Dalal and Dr. Tejas Garge, mainly Dr. Tejas Garge, should be talking about this. He will make, you must have heard our conversation just now that he has been busy throughout the day. But still, this is very dear to his heart and therefore he will make a small presentation. If it's not sufficient, we might have a special lecture by him later on. Okay, so welcome all of you. Thank you for being here. And uh, I give the rest, I mean, the online rest to Dr. Kurush Dalal to introduce Dr. Garge, talk about this Girija Valley project, and then Dr. Garge himself. Thank you. So thank you very, very much, uh, Dr. Garnik, for that. And a very, very warm welcome to all of you all to uh, the India Study Center's release of the Girija Valley monograph. Um, I'm going to introduce Dr. Garge separately and I'm going to talk about the monograph separately. So uh, Dr. Garge is an old friend and a colleague of mine from my days at Deccan College. He went on to do an absolutely fascinating PhD on the late Harappans in Haryana. He's also done some amazing work uh, in that region. He worked first for two years doing a diploma at the Archaeological Survey of India. He then worked for Dr. S.P. Gupta and in the Indian Archaeological Society, and then went on to a very, very interesting career at the Archaeological Survey of India itself. At the Archaeological Survey of India, he was incredibly lucky to work at headquarters in Delhi and to work side by side with some of the stalwarts of Indian archaeology and learn immediately with them at their feet what very few people get a chance to learn in a lifetime. He then went on to the Aurangabad circle where along with Mr. Madan Singh Chawan, he carried out this amazing work in the Girja Valley. He was then posted to the Northeast. And then most interestingly, he was asked, thanks, that we, and we can't thank the, uh, well, the, the gods of archeology span enough. He was then asked to come down and be the director of the Directorate of Archeology span and Museums, Maharashtra State. And he's been holding that post. He's been honest to God, fighting all kinds of establishment issues. And he has pulled up the socks of the DOAM and has been doing human service over there. Side by side, he's been publishing copiously. And he has also been doing some very interesting projects uh, for UNESCO recognition, etc. So all in all, Dr. Garge has been doing some fabulous work. And though he has been on the administrative end of things with the ASI and the DOM, this hasn't dampened his interest in fieldwork. And last year, uh, well, sadly, everybody was out of it due to the COVID issues. But before that, he was responsible for a fabulous prehistoric excavation, probably one of the first in three decades. And uh, we are getting some very, very fascinating data from the Ratnagiri region and the Sindhudu region as far as prehistoric tools are concerned. And this is in conjunction with some fabulous work they've been doing on the petroglyphs. And these have now been tentatively listed on the UNESCO list. So Dr. Garge has uh, an enormous number of uh, uh, fabulous jobs that he has done. I propose the Girija Valley monograph that we are releasing or have just released today. I can't think of a better day of doing it. Today is World Heritage Day, and uh, I'm, I'm very envious of Dr. Garge that he gets a publication to be released on this day. 
uh, this is absolutely the perfect kind of day that an archaeologist, historian, heritage specialist wants a publication to be released. Uh, I must tell you something very important about the concept behind the Girija Valley thing. Now, very, very few people today have realized the importance of river valley surveys and the importance of meticulous village to village river valley surveys in exploration in archaeology. Exploration is one of the two pillars on which Indian archaeology stands. Exploration and excavation. You cannot have excavation if you don't have exploration. And the Girija Valley monograph is virtually a how to explore book. How a systematic village to village river valley survey is conducted to understand so many more concepts and contexts. In this case of the Ajanta caves and so many other important sites, right from prehistoric and protohistoric sites in this region, Dr. Garge and his team have looked at a vast number of historical settlements a vast number of early medieval and medieval settlements, and even some very early colonial settlements in this region. It's an absolutely fabulous book. And it has been a long time since something like this has been published in Indian archaeology. In fact, I don't remember the last complete River Valley survey that has been published to date. I'm sure Dr. Garge will correct me when he speaks if there is anything else. But to the best of my knowledge, there is nothing. To me, this River Valley survey that Dr. Garge has come out with is a fantastic textbook for all students and teachers of archaeology. And for that, I have to thank him and Madan Singh Chavan and Amol Kulkarni and the rest of their team for putting this together and putting this out. And this is why I fought so hard. And I kept insisting to Dr. Karnik that we just had to publish this come what may and that Institution will be remembered for posterity for publishing this report. Thank you very, very much, Mukda ma'am, and to everybody at Institution who made this happen. Shashank, Alan, Ramesh, all of these people. We hope in a day or two we will have this up on Amazon and you will be able to download the e-copy of the report. Uh, in the meantime, I think that that's Dr. Karnik putting up the hard copy. I'm going to probably get myself a printed hard copy at my printers so that I can put it on my bookshelf. So thank you very, very much, ma'am. And con super congratulations to you, Dr. Garge, and to your entire team. And with that, I'm going to sign off and hand it over to Dr. Garge. Dr. Garge, the floor is yours. Dr. Garge, I want you to thank uh, Mr. Ramesh Gauriya and uh, Gauri Raghavan and uh, Shashank Savan for doing this work because all right. the layouts and you know nitty gritties and Alan is not here, but even him, they all were party to production of this. So Shashank is here, I think. Yeah, Shashank is here and Ramesh is of course here. Right. Of course, of course. So shall I start? Oh, please do, please. Do you want to share screen or something? Yes, I'm just doing that. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Mugda ma'am. Thank you, Kush, for kind introductory words. And first of all, uh, I would like to wish everyone a very happy World Heritage Day. And uh, I can't express my happiness that there could not be any better way to celebrate such occasion by publishing a book. Uh, 
I think this is the best way one can put uh, celebrations on. A few minutes back, uh, Mukda ma'am was asking me that we could have postponed it. I told her, you can't really uh, celebrate your birthday on some other day. It's the same feeling I gave. Uh, so I'm presenting this on behalf of my senior colleagues from Archaeological Survey of India on whose name the license for the explorations of Girija River Valley was issued. And uh, you might have got some glimpses of what we are going to talk about. I wish uh, the name of this book could have been In Shadow of Monumental Remains. You know, everyone knows about Ajanta, Elora, all those huge monuments uh, which have existed for uh, thousands and thousands of years. And we always wonder as a visitor, as a student, that uh, whether these monasteries were settlements, uh, whether they were inhabited by the monks, <coughs> and how those monks were actually surviving. Did they have any connection with the contemporary societies? And if answer is yes, then where are those societies? Where we should look for those people who existed uh, contemporaneously with these caves? So there are many questions. In fact, uh, along with monuments, for some reason, my slides are not shifting. Okay. Is it shifting now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, in fact, uh, the inspiration did come from a small river, which is not actually Gilja, but um, a river called Shivna. And the whole story started with a small inscription from Pital Khoya. Though I'm not an epigraphist or uh, so, so someone who keeps interest in ancient script, but uh, I was looking at this inscription and uh, it, it really triggered my thought process. <coughs> this, was, uh, this was about a donation uh, of a thamba or a stamba, uh, that is pillar inside cave number three of Pital Khura by a perfumer who is resident of Paitan or Pratishtham. And I, I was wondering how it was, uh, this particular cave is about 70 to 80 kilometers away from Python. And when I was looking at map, suddenly I could see a connection that there is a river which connects uh, these two locations. So we thought of uh, doing survey of uh, small rivulets in and around these great monumental remains of Ajanta, Elora, Pitalka and so on. So we investigated two rivers. Unfortunately, we could not complete uh, our survey of river Shivna, which we may take up uh, at some later point of time. But today, let us talk about Girija River, uh, on which uh, the monograph is being published. So as Mugdha ma'am mentioned, it originates uh, in uh, hillocks of Maismal, and again, my small plateau it serves as a backdrop for world famous Elora caves. So it originates uh, in my small and it flows eastwards towards Purna. So you can see these caves where my cursor is, and uh, it comes down from hills and it ultimately merges with Purna in the east. So uh, you have a famous site of Bokadan and you know the Satvahan remains from Bokadan uh, are quite famous. So when we started working on this region, only reference point was Bokadan and one site called Pal, which was reported by uh, Mr. Mahadevaya of Archaeological Survey of India, Mr. Mahadeva and Ajit Kumar, uh, when they were technical assistants, they had reported this site. So this is entire stretch of river valley, uh, a small river as, uh, and you can see 
it is exactly on the crossing point if you travel from either uh, eloa khultabad region or aurangabad region towards ajanta caves and you know uh, from aurangabad uh, actually if you go a little further towards west you reach to pythan so if you look at ancient trade route which starts from pythan and which goes to ujjain this exactly falls on the same trade route of ancient times so uh, i was wondering whether we should look for the sites along the road but you know uh, this uh, this 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 is modern highway and we exactly don't know what was the alignment of the road but i was sure about existence of archaeological sites near water bodies so we started looking for small rivulets uh, see when you are serving uh, larger rivers or main rivers like godavari or purna they have comparatively a larger flood plain so existence of larger sites on their banks is a comparatively rare uh, phenomenon but if you look at tributaries or distributaries or small rivulets their flood plain is comparatively smaller so you get to see n number of archaeological sites <coughs> on the banks of such small rivers so this particular rivers does not flow more than 60 to 70 km and we started uh, its investigation with uh, these points so today's presentation is basically divided into historical background geographical extent and environment geology uh, uh, and soils mythology and legends as you know this area is full of uh, rocket architecture with a lot of mythology playing role in depictions of the sculptural art or panels of uh, rocket architecture and a bit about uh, previous archaeological explorations and about present explorations so this is the mysmal plateau which mukda ma'am mentioned and uh, you also see a uh, temple of girija mata where this particular river originates but uh, to our surprise this entire plateau was full of microlithic sites so probably humans were already staying on this there are many upper paleolithic sites uh, which are reported from uh, vicinity of aurangabad so probably there was a continuation of human life on this plateaus in form of mesolithic settlements which are represented by the microliths so there was definitely habitation on my small plateau and as you go down there's the first uh, town of takri where we recorded one ancient hanuman temple uh, and small remains of uh, fortifications so there are two gateways of uh, late medieval period probably uh, dated around 18th century then we also happen to locate a small gadhi a small archaeological site where we could retrieve remains of uh, uh, medieval era pottery and with certain artifacts we could date this place with uh, bahmani period then uh, the same place is also reported with uh, shiva temple uh, which is again datable to uh, early medieval era and there was another site of devana buddha where old uh, remains of older temples are reported there is another site with uh, devana khud where you get to see havelis of 20th century uh, and brick architecture is quite amazing then uh, there is a site of wadud kanhuva and again you get to see a habitation deposit along with uh, medieval pottery and uh, you know bangle fragments again dating back to bahmani period and the area is also littered with microliths now this is the site of sherga where you uh, see a broken image of hanuman and this very important site of dongergao uh, which is a large habitation mound uh, starting from uh, early historical era 
uh, continuing through medieval and late medieval ages. And this was quite an uh, important site as uh, we could find a huge variety of pottery through which uh, we could build a chronological sequence of this particular era. era. <clears throat> You can also see some of the fragments of antiquities, which are dated back to Satvahan period. Again, on the surface of uh, Dongagao, you have remains of a temple uh, dating to 11th to 12th century. Of course, there's a lot of application of vermilion, but uh, some of the sculptures are quite astonishing. And, you know, uh, now people have reconstructed uh, a temple from ancient remains. And some of the sculptures are quite beautiful. And this is a rare depiction of scene of agriculture where, where you can see bulls. And again, uh, a person, a farmer, probably dating back to 12th century, is depicted here, which is quite rare in terms of depiction of such uh, scenes. Uh, on temples. And this is site of uh, Pimpurga where you have loose sculptures, samadhis, a habitation mound, uh, and again a separate area on the river bank uh, from which you retrieve microliths. Then uh, the habitation mound is reported with medieval pottery. Then uh, the site of um, Masla. This is very important site of Pal, where you have a medieval temple with certain modifications till late medieval age. And uh, this site was already reported by Mr. Mahadevaya and Dr. Ajit Kumar. And uh, this was quite an important site. It's a large mound. Now, almost uh, the, the modern village stands on ancient mound and you can see uh, how rich antiquities were. There's a ritualistic uh, object or a turf and n number of antiquities which actually shows that uh, this particular location was engaged in trend, uh, trade activities right from uh, early historical period. So again, uh, pottery coming from Pal is very important because you get to see some remains of black and uh, red pottery, red polished pot pottery. And this particular change is classic indication of existence of Satvahana period. Then there's a site of Kanari. Fulambri is again very important. As you see, remains of a temple. This site of Pathari again with microliths. And there's a habitation mound with uh, medieval pottery the site of Varga, again, huge mound, but you know, uh, this is actually accumulation of soils from mound in order to construct a medieval gadi. So this was actually a bastion uh, from which stones are taken out. And now the heap of mud still stands with uh, indication of a lot of pottery right from Satvahana area. This site of Vadukhud, And this is Shevta Khud, again uh, with remains of late medieval age. It is a hab habitation mound of uh, Bahamani period. And some hero stones. This is site of Burga Verge. Again, few hero stones. The site of Pedga. You are going too fast, Dr. Garji. Uh, okay, ma'am. This is actually a medieval settlement, probably starting from Bahamani period, uh, showing existence of uh, uh, continuity of life medi uh, in medieval era. This is the site of Padli. Uh, again, uh, you see remains of a lot of bangles. Arikanat shaped bead, uh, which is uh, uh, typical to historical era. And again, glass bangles and uh, quite typical glass bangles uh, related to Bahmani period. 
this is site of takri jirak where again you see uh, the ancient deposits are being put uh, as a soil in order to construct a bastion and now that soil heap of soil remains standing tall uh, without any uh, outer casing of the stone walls again uh, you have uh, remains of uh, early historical or satvahana pottery see i might be uh, you may think that i am giving this passing references as a satvahana pottery or bahmani pottery but you know it takes a lot of efforts to collect this potsherd from the surface of the mound uh, to wash them then classify them according to the shapes compare them with existing uh, archaeological uh, reports and then uh, draw them photograph them and then uh, you can actually comment upon them so whatever information i am passing on in few seconds it might have taken uh, months or together to reach to that status so and luckily the few of my colleagues are here who who um, help in great deal uh, in order to identify this so we make these kind of drawings in order to establish its chronology so there is a representation of the exact uh, picture of the potsherd and uh, the same drawing is reflected on the right hand side so you will see similar uh, uh, dates and drawings in the monograph the site of uh, vajrakheda again you have a have habitation mound a la very large mound again starting from historical period and continuing through medieval ages there is a shiva temple of course you will see lot of modifications but one can be quite sure that uh, it had its origin in yadava period is the site of goshegaon again uh, there is more or less similar evidence of medieval era mound and havelis again uh, dating back to late medieval age is hasnabad again you have havelis and lot of soil which is extracted from hab habitational mound in nearby area in order to construct modern walls is the site of eta where you get to see depiction of a vilgar <clears throat> this is site of saukheda uh, now we are going more and more close to bokadan so um, of course this site belongs to medieval era and you can even in visuals in picture you will you will be able to see roughness uh, or crudeness of the medieval pottery is there go command again long stretch from early historic to medieval habitation this is the site of bolgao khadak and now there is more variety of uh, bangle fragments and very crude uh, medieval era pottery there is the site of zaukheda with sculpture of uh, vishnu the site of khadki representing uh, medieval era probably bahmani period with typical black ware crude red ware sculptures belonging to late yadav era this is the site of latifpur again yielding more or less similar evidences the site of takri bazar again there is a habitation mound with bangle fragments and pottery remains the site of 
बोलगाव तळू and now you will be able to clearly see that all these mounds are basically used as dustbin of the village so you will see a lot of dirt uh, and so it's it's sometimes pretty difficult to work on uh, these sites in modern context but you will see this is a classic location of any settlements where river is meandering it is you are ensured to have uh, longer duration supply of water so before starting explorations we had really studied google uh, images very carefully though we did not have any access to high resolution satellite data we had made certain presumptions about existence of uh, ancient mounds by just looking at uh, google images so this was one of the fantastic result of using google earth and some of our presumptions they really turned uh, turned out to be true again uh, this is a classic site uh, presenting uh, medieval pottery the shiva temple another mount in the vicinity now river jeeja merges with purna so this is basically a contributory of purna and here uh, you get to see some of the religious uh, sites in form of shivlinga and uh, very inverted sculptures of uma shiva uma and shiva again you have remains of a yadava temple there is a habitation mound now let me come to the whole picture of uh, gilja river valley if you try to put this entire data on map how this would look like so uh, this is my small on one end and this is where gilja meets purna so you will see existence of all satvahana period sites mostly into middle and low reaches of gilja river valley so you don't see even a single dot towards the hills and uh, middle reaches but uh, right from pal you start uh, getting this habitation sites across and this falls exactly on the crossing road uh, of uh, ujjain to pratishthan so one can understand its importance here now let's look at the wakatak period sites it seems they are evenly distributed uh, in the entire uh, gilja river valley almost uh, they are distributed at, at the equal distance and uh, of course uh, this this satvahana period sites uh, they must have continued along with uh, uh, new sites which have come up during wakatak period and you know wakatak period is great uh, in terms of uh, excavations of this great caves so you definitely get to see existence of contemporary habitation or contemporary villages which coexisted with this uh, living monasteries in 3rd and 4th century ad now we come to bahmani settlements again you will see low reaches are quite densely populated with bahmani sites and there are very few sites in the upper reaches of uh, gilja river then these are late medieval settlements again distributed almost throughout uh, gilja river valley and this is the entire cultural scenario dotted fully uh, with uh, different cultural uh, periods so it shows the gilja river valley was uh, habited right from 3rd century bc till uh, 18th or 19th century 
uh, and uh, we continue to have that habitation in form of model uh, modern settlements in the Asia River. So, in another words, there is continuity of human life for more than two thousand years in the same space where those caves have existed. And these are not only caves, in the, uh, but in later medieval ages, you have great forts like Dalatabad, and you also get to see uh, many gadis being constructed. So these gadis were small uh, center points, small focal points of uh, capturing resources in a particular local area in a radius of say seven to ten kilometers, and n number of gadis uh, they ensured. Uh, procurement uh, and management of resources in a certain area. So then one can imagine how uh, these economic activities actually worked out in uh, medieval era. <clears throat> so if you um, want to conclude this, uh, the, almost 50 villages were surveyed, out of which uh, there were three Mycolithic sites. So it's quite possible that uh, the human life in these particular areas may go back to Mesolithic period, but in absence of any uh, contextual finds, we are not jumping to any conclusion, and uh, we are interpreting the beginning of uh, human settlements in this area from Sakwahana region itself. Of course, though Mahisma had concluding evidences of existence of uh, Mesolithic settlements. Uh, but we are not sure whether uh, a stage of Chalcolithic uh, sites ever existed where you get to see transition from Stone Age to settled life. So some of the places could have straight away jumped from uh, Mesolithic technology to early historical era. So out of 27 habitation mounds, eight uh, sites belong to Satwana period, uh, about I think uh, I have mentioned two, but there are actually five sites with Wakatak affinity. There are 20 sites related to Bahmani period and six uh, sites related to Mughal and six related to late medieval uh, site. That, that is post-Mughal, Asaf Jahi, or, uh, almost 20th century sites. And entire area is littered with remains of temples, loot sculptures, uh, uh, and hero stones and so on. So this was a very quick review which is covered in present book. And what is more important that uh, we have uh, defined this chronology on the basis of ceramic remains. And you won't find too many archaeological monographs where pottery drawings from explorations are defined along with description, the pictures, and so on. And, you know, uh, uh, we constantly cross-check this data from the existing reports of uh, Python, uh, Bhokadan, Dalatabad, where, uh, wherein we could uh, give some chronology to the surface finding. It's, it's very hard to date anything which is found on the surface. If you have, if you don't have context, uh, archaeological context of a particular layer, it's very hard to date some of the pottery shapes because they're timeless. For example, red and certain uh, gray wares, they could be found in any time. But there are certain shapes and certain sleeps which have, which are typical to that uh, particular period. For example, uh, RPW, uh, eight polish where orangish buff was quite typical to Satvahana era on basis of which we could confirm existence of Satvahana period. So definitely in Satvahana period when they started excavating those great caves, uh, uh, there was a rural thriving countryside which was contributing uh, in terms of economy to the urban centers maybe due to livestock or maybe due to agricultural production. And there were certain sites which were also engaged in uh, giving some kind of platform to the trade activities. So 
if you try to study all the archaeological data which is found in shadow of great monumental remains i think then only we will be able to complete a holistic picture of any ancient landscape and i'm i'm really happy that we are publishing this monograph on world heritage day in the year where unesco uh, has uh, propagated a theme of heritage and environment so this is being published uh, on a perfect occasion so i can't thank enough uh, to dr akesh tiwari who encouraged us to uh, publish this data in form of a monograph in uh, collaborative efforts with institusen he was kind enough to permit this and i am actually thankful to dr amol kulkarni who studied all the pottery so he is the main scholar behind uh, description of pottery uh, uh, then defining chronology uh, of the region and so on dr kishor chalwadi uh, was great instrument in uh, actual field work he not only helped me uh, but he was also managing uh, all the logistic affairs of these explorations <coughs> and with uh, amol kulkarni's guidance uh, mr mayesh khadke who was then documentation assistant in isi aurangabad and now he is working with uh, state archaeology he came up with a wonderful drawings he picked up that uh, technique of drawing perfectly and whatever uh, drawings that you see in uh, today's monograph are drawn by him so hats off to the quality of photographs that he he has put in and uh, drawings uh, which he has created under guidance of dr amol kulkarni i want to thank his wife Uh, uh, snehali kulkarni khadke who was also document assistant at that point of time uh, both of them they are seen here in the picture and uh, she was great help in writing description uh, description of antiquities and so on and of course i can't thank enough dr mukta karni uh, for this initiative of printing this monograph to institution trust you know friends uh, these kind of uh, monographs absolutely they don't have any commercial value but there is a lot of knowledge so today uh, i mean uh, that that ratio uh, that equilibrium is a bit disturbed um, but institution trust was really kind enough to provide platform for this type of publication which is not really commercially viable so thanks to dr kush jalal for uh, being instrumental uh, for this publication and mr ramesh and i forgot the name of the gentleman that mukda madam uh, uttered few minutes back for yeah, putting sir. all the efforts in publication so thank you team asi thank you team state archaeology and thank you team institusen for bringing this uh alive in form of printed publication thank you so much and have a great heritage day we had a great heritage day because of you dr garge yeah it was really good and uh, well i sorry to disturb that i disturbed you in between to requesting you to go slow but that was needed <laughs> i just wanted to be in time <laughs> and uh, we, it's it's perfect it's absolutely perfect any questions the chat box is open you can pose your questions or you can uh what well, unmute yourselves and talk Dr. Gargi, do you think if we have similar excavation explorations at uh, the Purna River, mm -hmm. is it possible that something could be found out? Of course, of course. There are people who have already taken up explorations in Purna. 
mm-hmm. and uh, what my emphasis is instead of main uh, larger rivers one should check the contributors and distributors where there are better chances of finding ancient habitation deposits so definitely there there's a potential So is it like contributing? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not in a position to answer that anymore. Is State Department considering anything? Yes. Uh, see, we did uh, carry out excavations two years back, and uh, the mono, uh, I mean the publication is still not out. So ethically, I don't feel right to apply for a new license unless unless I come up with Uh, publication so uh, at present we are still compiling a report of the excavations and exploration that we carried out in uh, konkan and uh, yes uh, we did some surveys and we have found some interesting remains in usmanabad uh, remains of a early historical stupa uh, which is carved in s- soft stone Uh, which is quite interesting so uh, we are planning to excavate that in future that's fabulous news and hopefully the mandal project is still on yeah. yes very much for next year right. very very much we look forward to it so do we sir so do we if there are no questions uh, shall we ask mukda ma'am to uh, Well, deliver the vote of thanks and to shut down the session. Okay. Um. So actually, almost everybody has been thanked. Doctor Garge himself thanked his team and the Instrucent team too, and I'm really thankful to you, Doctor Kurush Dalal, that you insisted on this, and I I I wish we could afford a better print. a better printed uh, edition we will do something about it and uh, as far as thanks are <laughs> okay it was it was it you only dr vela hmm. okay i'm sorry so uh, we had a great heritage day and that is also again thanks to dr tejas garge i would not have thought of this to keep it on 18th of uh, april but he being at the you know center of the archaeological activity in maharashtra of course he knew about it and you made our day dr garge we will go ahead with this and uh, let's see what the other project you were thinking that the pr- printing and publication is pending we will do something about that too so uh i thank this collaboration between us institution and directorate of archaeology uh, and museums let's do more things in coming future let's hope to see better days so thank you everybody thank you kurush thank you shashank thank you ramesh and thanks the audience i i don't know your team uh, that well but uh, well harshada had done some work in this i know that because harshada is you no know, partly the part of the institution team too so please convey my thanks to her i think we are at the end of it we will let you know when the e copy is uh, available on our website we are having issues with our website it was to be done today but nothing has happened ah oh. <laughs> are in new era of history began it has already begun and we are only small cogs in the wheels okay thank you very much tomorrow i am going to go to dr garge and give him the printed copies thank you so shall thank you ma'am with the yes ma'am thank you good night good night